Well, overall, we've come up with a reasonable approach for connecting the UDOT school to the internet. According to the link budget we calculated for both directions, the received signal strength should be high enough, and the height we've chosen for our antennas should ensure that 70% of the first Fresnel zone is clear and the Earth's curvature does not get in the way of our line of sight link. We just need to make sure that as we install the antennas, we finally adjust them until we know they are pointing exactly towards each other as much as possible. This can be a cumbersome task for long links. Now remember, as part of our design challenge, we want our design for a wireless telecommunication system to be repeatable, meaning we want to be able to use a similar approach in different areas of FSM. So let's now consider the other link we want to establish, which is on Pompeii Island, and it's to Awak School. Let's see if we can use the same approach that we used from Wayno Island to UDOT. In this case, we want a link that extends between two different points on Pompeii Island, which already has a fiber optic cable going to it. Point number two here is Awak Elementary, and point number one is where we have an internet access point. The line of sight distance between these two points is 5.87 kilometers, and this line of sight path crosses Depek Island. Looking at this map, there are perhaps two things that are noticeably different for this link. One, the propagation path is shorter, so the Earth's curvature will have less of an effect. And two, the propagation path is not necessarily clear. It's not just ob over open water, as we had for the last link. So let's start by looking at the topography between the two sites. On the left here is the internet access point. On the right is Awak Elementary. Something we can immediately see on the right side of this slide is that there's a big hill right in front of Awak Elementary. On this scale, it looks more like a mountain, but it's just a hill. So perhaps we would have to consider putting the antenna not exactly at Awak Elementary, but instead somewhere nearby, either around the side of the hill, if that's possible, or perhaps even all the way up at the peak of the hill. Here is a Google Earth view of Awak Elementary. We can see it's on a piece of land that sticks out into the ocean. And here is the hill that is in the path of our wireless link. From this view, we can see that if we put the antenna way up on the top of the hill, we wouldn't have easy access to it. But do you see this road extending around the side of the hill? It might be a lot easier to put our antenna along the road on the side of the hill. If we position the antenna at Awak Elementary around the side of the hill, the propagation path would now follow this red dotted line, which does have a line of sight, using our eyes, between the two antennas. Of course, now we also know from our discussion of Fresnel zones that this path is unlikely to satisfy the requirement of keeping 70% of the first Fresnel zone open. And indeed, that is the case. Here is the radio mobile result when the antenna on the left is in transmit mode and the antenna on the right is in receive mode. Radio mobile colors the surface of the ground in order to indicate the suitability of placing a receiving antenna there. For example, if the receiver is placed on a green service, surface, like here or here, a reliable link can be established with the transmitter. Yellow surfaces may not provide reliable connectivity, like right here and here, and red surfaces should be avoided. The direct line of sight and Fresnel zone is also shown. So it looks like this link is going to require more work than the last one, but it appears that our approach for setting up a wireless link is appropriate, especially with the help of radio mobile. Radio Mobile can even tell us how high the antenna needs to be depending on the location we choose. You can see the right here in this row. I just want to finish this design challenge by mentioning that in addition to setting up a wireless link, we need to make sure that the antennas have access to power. A small solar panel on uh, next to the antennas uh, could provide the necessary power in remote areas. Also, it would be useful to help the teachers of the schools learn how to use the computers. Here's someone watching a Khan Academy video. 
By the way, fixed wireless internet over long distances is not just used in developing countries. Here in Utah, we have Utah Broadband, for example. I was only able to access the internet at my house through Utah Broadband during the first four years that I was in Utah. Where I lived, we didn't have cell service or DSL or fiber. Here is the coverage area for Utah Broadband. Well, this concludes this design challenge and the topics for this course. I really enjoyed having you in class this semester and I'm looking forward to seeing your final projects. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope to see you around.